what is poppin' people, it's your boy Out of Order, and welcome back to a brand new After Effects tutorial. This is the series where I teach you guys everything you need to know about After Effects, and recently, Bicycle Day was last week, so I figured why not make a tutorial on how to create a trippy psychedelic effect. Also, I don't promote the use of psychedelics, but without further ado guys, let's get straight on into the tutorial. Alright guys, so I'm gonna be getting into the tutorial part of this video, so as you guys can see, I got a few clips imported already, so we got the world layer, we got the players layer, we got the depth layer, and of course we got the green screen layer. Uh, I recorded these clips with T6GR and 300 FPS. I didn't do any higher because I felt like it wasn't necessary for this. But anyway guys, let's just jump right into this. So, as you can see, you don't really need all of these different like video layers. You can still do some of these effects without it. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be using these layers just so it'll make it a lot easier. So I think the first thing we're going to be talking about is what a psychedelic effect really looks like. So if you saw in the preview of the video, that's kind of what I mean. It's kind of like that trippy effect you know, a lot of kaleidoscopes, a lot of colors, a lot of shapes, stuff like that. So I'm going to be creating that here. There are a few trippy effects that psychedelics will give you. So for this video, I'll be doing my subjective take on the visuals I've seen. So for, without further ado, the first thing we're going to get started off is with colors and displacement. I'll leave a link down below to a website called the Effect Index. It basically has a list of subjective effects that you can get while on psychedelics. So I'll leave a link down to that down below if you want to get super creative making and recreating those effects. But without further ado, let's start with something simple and we're going to start with colors. Now a lot of psychedelic effects have variety in different colors, so we're gonna get started by adding something as simple as maybe curves or even hue and saturation. Now with curves, we're gonna start simple by just increasing the contrast a little, so maybe lower the shadows and increase the highlights like that. Now let's add hue and saturation and just keyframe it a little bit. You can use expressions with it also, but since it's just one clip, I don't feel like we really need to. So as you can see, we'll just have the colors change a tiny bit like that. There's also better ways to do this as well. If you want to just only, you know, change the color of the highlight or change the color of a certain color. Uh, what you can do is go to your world layer, which is right here, and uh, I'm just going to duplicate the world layer. Now, on the first world layer, I'm going to enable uh, transparency or alpha so we can see what we're doing. And uh, this is an effect I do often on a lot of my edits, not just creating psychedelic looks, but just like a lot of edits in general. Uh, we'll just add key light and uh, select a particular color. So like, like that color, for example, will work. Now we can just play around with these settings, you know, turn this off, see how it looks, you know, and just mess around with it till we get like a specific color masked out like that. So as you can see, that looks all right. So we'll uh, leave that there and uh, we'll turn this effect back on. Let me turn it off the CC. So now that we got this like specific uh, highlight or color masked out, uh, this works a lot better with like, you know, different maps that have more colors since, you know, this whole map kind of looks the same. But uh, what we can do now is we can add something as simple as the hue and saturation effect I'll go to the beginning, keyframe it. I'll go to the end, keyframe it as well. So now only specific colors on the world are going to change. So as you can see, guys, it's starting to come together. It's starting to look a lot more trippier, a lot more psychedelic. But that's only just the colors aspect. You can, of course, mess with this too. So if you want to change the color of like the greens in particular or the blues as well, you can mess with that as well too. And if you think the color changing is still too strong, we can duplicate the layer. And then once you duplicate the layer, you can change the opacity on it. And uh, as you can see, this is what it looks like without any of it, which is you know, not that cool. And then we can lower it a tiny bit, get more colors, mess with it like that. You can also change the blending mode on this too. Some of these blending modes look really trippy as well. I know difference is a common effect a lot of people use when creating psychedelic looks. In this instance, it's not going to make a difference because it's not really meant to be a blending mode. It's more of meant to like combine two layers together and like find out what's separating them, uh, if that makes any sense. But yeah, so I'm going to keep the blending mode as normal and I'm going to make the opacity 73 because I feel like that looks fine. And as you can see, now we got the color aspect kind of looking all right now let's move on to the next part another effect you can add to the colors is arithmetic now what this effect does is it kind of lowers the quality in terms of like color channels so as you can see if we increase that it'll look like that we increase this too it'll look like this and uh, as you can see it's kind of starting to distort a little but that's just because like it's reducing the color channels so let me make it like this and we'll make this really subtle we'll probably make each of them like seven or something so now that we got arithmetic and the curves done and we also got the world changing colors the next effect i'm gonna add is some glows so i usually use uni glow because it's really similar to deep glow except it doesn't lag as much so we're just gonna mess with the threshold here mess with the intensity, mess with the size too, and uh, I want to make the intensity a little less, so something like this maybe, like something kind of subtle, but not really. So now that the uni glow looks kind of fine, the next glow I'm going to add is S glow aura. Now this effect is kind of weird because as you can see, it looks way over the top here, so we want to adjust it, uh, mess around with the threshold maybe, the brightness too, and uh, where is it? The frequency as well. So the frequency is, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I feel like 
you know, a lot of psychedelics will either have it really low like this or like really high like that or both at the same time. So I feel like we finished all the glows here. As you can see, I made a really subtle uh, little frequency glow. We got the uni glow. We got the color changing. Uh, we got the contrast and we got a few other stuff going. But for now, I think that's pretty much how it goes for colors. I mean, you can, of course, increase this a bunch, you know, play around with it more. But now let's move on to the actual more like perceptual distortions. So another perceptual distortion a lot of people do uh, when creating psychedelic effects is what they'll do is they'll have the whole world kind of like warp around. So I'm going to make a new adjustment layer and place it below the green screen layer. So as you can see, we got an adjustment layer. And the next thing I'm going to add on it is you can either use something like S Distort or S Distort RGB or Chroma. Uh, maybe not S Distort Blur. I don't really use it for stuff like this. But once you got S Distort on here as well, what I usually do when creating these sort of looks is I increase the blur lens a ton. Maybe not that much, but like, you know, I, I usually have the blur lens pretty high. So something like this maybe. And then same with the, the amount. You want the amount to be really, really small. Now, for the most part, that looks kind of okay, but it's not really psychedelic looking. Psychedelics don't really do that with your perception. So what we can do is keyframe the warp direction and go to the end and then just increase it a little. Now, it probably won't look too good because the gun isn't also warping, but it also might look fine. And if you want the gun to warp as well, then you can just place the adjustment layer above the gun too. So as you guys can see, we got the world warping a little bit. It's really subtle. It's not too dramatic. You can, of course, mess around with all these settings and play with it too. You can also use, uh, like I said, S Distort RGB as well if you want the little chromatic aberrations on the distortions. But for now, I think it's fine. So now that we got the whole world warping and the colors, I feel like we're still missing the part of what makes this like psychedelic, which is the kaleidoscope effects. So for the kaleidoscope effects, it's usually always on the edge of like your frame. Like in your peripheral vision, it's usually like on the edge of it. So I feel like we can't just have like S Distort on the whole thing because that's just not, you know, that just doesn't really look that good. So what I'm going to do in this next part is I'm going to be duplicating the world layer and creating displacement maps out of it into the form of a kaleidoscope. So to me, this is the part that really makes it a psychedelic look. I'm just going to duplicate the world layer. So as you guys can see, we got the world layer here. It looks all right, whatever. And the next thing I'm going to do now is we're going to add S Kaleido Radial. Now, S Kaleido Radial, I feel like does this better than all the other kaleidoscopes. Like, yeah, you can just use, you know, normal Kaleido or Kaleido Polar, but I feel like S Kaleido Radial really gets the job done. See, now this is starting to look a lot more psychedelic. Now, this looks fine if you're trying to create a full psychedelic look, kind of like an ego death, but I feel like in this instance, we kind of want to actually still show the clip because as you guys can see, you can't really tell, like, like you can't even tell it's a COD edit anymore, you know? What we're going to do now is we're just going to solo this here and we're going to just sort of map it onto a displacement map. So what I do for this part is I duplicate the world layer again. We're going to delete the Kaleido effect. Now you will need a plugin that's not really common. I don't really see too many people use this plugin, but we're going to be using EFX Z depth cut for this instance. Now you don't really need to use this effect. I feel like it just makes it a lot easier than using something else. Now I'll show you how to do it with this plugin and I'll show you how to do it without the plugin. So with the plugin, the next thing we're going to want to do is select the depth layer here where it says Z depth pass. So the Z depth is right there. We're going to select effects and mask. We're going to solo only this part and we're just going to want to play around with these settings. So as you can see, we can drag this out over here. Uh, we can also feather it out a little too, something like that maybe. So as you can see, we got that there. And uh, if we turn this on, you'll see that we kind of have the sort of like psychedelic going on in the background. I'm going to make it further back just a little bit. So as you can see, something like that will look cool. So now that we got that done, all we got to do is select them both, pre-compose them. We'll just call it something like displacement. I can't even type right. Displacement map. There we go. As cool as it looks, it still doesn't really look that cool. It looks kind of out of place. So what I'm going to do now is make an adjustment layer. And with the adjustment layer here, we don't need to track mat it to anything, but instead we're going to select it. Now I'm going to be using another plugin. This is called Displacer Pro. This one is actually free. I'll leave a link to it down in the description down below. It's made by Plugin Everything. They're the same people that make Deep Glow. So yeah, you're just going to want to download this free plugin right here. And you want to select the map layer, which is the one we just created, Effects and Mask. And let me unhide this, unhide this, and turn this off. Now, as you guys can see, nothing really happened. We still have that normal like video look that we were going for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the anchor point 50. 
for both of these and that'll make the displacement occur in the center because psychedelics usually it's like a circle almost like your peripheral vision's the most distorted so the center will is where like the distortion is going to be coming from so now that we got that out of the way now we can mess around with these settings right here so you can do anything from making it rotate a little or you can have it scale in a little but for this instance we'll just have a subtle rotation of like five maybe subtle scale uh inwards of um like five percent as well and uh, map adjustments you can also soften it down too if it looks too harsh almost which i will i'll soften it just a tiny bit uh, you can also mess with all these settings here edge behavior you can repeat the edges so you don't get this sort of like black void on the outside like that if you want to you know, do like a little mirror repeat that's usually what i do as you can see now it's mirrored so it's not just like full on just emptiness yo what's up guys it's order from the future i just got done recording the video and i completely forgot to tell you how to do it without the efx plugin so let me just show you right now it's extremely simple i'm just going to duplicate all these so i have something else to work on let me just change the color on it so i don't mix them up so what we're gonna do now is i'm gonna delete the efx plugin because i feel like a majority of people watching this video don't have it so now that we got that out of the way we're gonna drag the depth layer up on top and what we can do is use an effect like levels so we'll slap levels on here maybe lower the little black spots increase the highlights like that boom get rid of that track mat we can do luma mat we solo these two you get the same effect. As you can see, that's the same result right there. And all you would do after that is just map the Displacer Pro to the pre-comp. So as you can see, now that we got it finished, now it's starting to look actually psychedelic. As you can see, the whole peripheral vision is completely distorted, while the center is kind of still kind of visible to tell like what's going on. That's why I like using Displacer Pro. And like I said, it's free, so be sure to download it down below. So now that that's done, there's a few more effects I want to show off and mess with some stuff. So like I said, you can really mess with all this stuff here. You can keyframe the rotation too if you want to so like maybe on shots it'll get more impactful and such and like i said you can adjust the softness now for the softness i feel like it really depends on what you're going for i feel like drugs like acid or lsd they make objects that have like really round edges so like my round finger they make them have really sharp edges while psychedelics like shrooms do the opposite and they make objects with really sharp edges have round corners so it's kind of like vice versa there so i guess we'll go for a more of like a shroom look so we'll just increase the softness a bunch and like i said maybe we'll animate the rotation too we could have it start at like negative 10 maybe go to the end have it go to negative 10 or positive 10 sorry and uh, you can of course use expressions for all these two as well now there's another effect i want to talk about which is echo space echo space is a really underrated effect however you will need a motion track for this so for echo space what it essentially does is it duplicates your objects so as you can see you know if i want to have my gun like let's say he shoots for example and then we can motion track it into 3d space of the gun like flying forward we're like out of the screen and stuff like that i'll probably make a tutorial for that in the future because that's going to be a whole nother video because of how complex it is but for this instance we'll just start off with something a lot more simpler such as like s infinite zoom which kind of does the same thing as what i was talking about except this one's more 2d instead of 3d so yeah make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my echo space tutorial so i'm going to duplicate the gun layer as you can see right here and i'm going to add s infinite zoom on it right there and uh, we can do things like you know, mess with the twist, shrink per level, and, uh, oh, that looks like too much, honestly. That's way too much. But as you can see, we can do stuff like this, have it really spin. Uh, you can also mess with the wrap and stuff like that, too. But I feel like that's still kind of too much. So we'll just, maybe something like lighten, except we'll just increase the opacity to, like, or lower the opacity to, like, 10%. Actually, I'm gonna lower it more to, like, maybe 17, because I feel like that's still just way too much. So as you guys can see, whenever he shoots or scopes in, you'll notice there's, like, a little visual vortex appearing on screen, like that. Now, another thing you can do is you can download some psychedelic overlays this is my overlay pack right here as you can see i got a bunch of different overlays here so i'm just gonna drag one and slap it over it all now you can find some on youtube or really anywhere there's a lot of different overlays like this so this is just one of the overlays out of my overlay pack and if you're watching the video right now it probably already came out already so if you want to go buy my overlays be sure to check it out in the description down below any support means the world to me so thank you guys so much if you do decide to purchase this so now that i got this overlay over everything i'm gonna mess around with the blend modes right here so i guess we'll do something like maybe overlay but uh obviously that's gonna be way too much still so we'll lower the opacity on it as well we'll make it really subtle we'll do like 14 percent. and the next thing i'm gonna add is i want the players to flicker so yeah let me increase the quality here as you guys can see he's kind of out of place he still has like the normal map colors from the original recording so i'm gonna lower this quality again and we're gonna add something like s flicker so now we got s flicker we can increase the color amplitude on him so we can make it something like this so now he should be flickering colors above 
bunch. You can also add effects like mirror on here as well, except I feel like mirror wouldn't really look good on this clip in particular, just because there's so much stuff already going on right now. But yeah, that's always still an option too. So now we are pretty much done, guys. Let me go back into the main composition. Now it's time for the last two effects I'm going to be talking about. The next thing we're going to add is the actual color correction. So I'm just going to use magic bullet looks. I've already made a ton of tutorials on color grading and color correction, so I'm not going to go into detail on this. So we're just going to grab a preset, honestly. And you don't even have to use a preset or use magic bullet looks to begin with. You can literally use any effect that you normally do for color grading or color correction. So yeah, I'm just going to find something that looks cool. All right, guys. So I finished making a CC. I just grabbed a preset really quickly and I just started customizing it a little bit. So we got some Unity on here. As you can see, there's a bunch of different Unities. I got some optical diffusion, halation, and a lookup table. So now that the CC is done, I'm going to add the very last effect, which I think makes the biggest difference and turns it just from an ordinary edit into a psychedelic edit. Now, the reason I save this effect for last is because it is the laggiest effect in all of After Effects. This is the one effect I only ever add last and I rarely use just because of how slow it is, which is echo. Now, I feel like almost every psychedelic or psychoactive drug for that matter will give you some sort of echo effect. So as you can see, I just slapped echo on it. Now, I usually keep it on the add operator and uh, the echo time is usually also fine. Number of echoes you can increase or decrease it. I wouldn't go over 20 though because like once you go past 20, that's like when you're going to start crashing and bugging out. So let me lower the delay and lower the starting intensity. Now, this is going to take like a really, really long time to RAM preview because of just how laggy it is. Now, I've heard rumors that Ignite's echo effect runs a lot better than the default one, except I don't have Ignite installed because I just absolutely despise that plugin pack. So yeah, let's just wait for this to RAM preview and we'll see how it looks when it's ready. All right, guys, so it's been about five to 10 minutes and it's only rendered half of it so far and I don't really feel like waiting any longer so I'll just show you guys what it looks like and as you guys can see we got the little tracers or after images as they're called so yeah make sure to use echo as the very last effect you ever add on your edit because this is why but honestly I feel like it's necessary for psychedelic looks just because of how accurate it is and just how freaking cool it looks in general you can also add effects like fractal but I feel like that'll give you more of like a DMT look except I've never done DMT before and I never will so you know I can't really say for sure what it'll look like in all honesty, it probably just looks like every single After Effects effect combined, maximized to like infinity or something. Honestly, I really like how this came out though. I feel like these effects would go really hard on a Pink Floyd or Tool song or something like that. But nevertheless, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I make videos on After Effects and all sorts of other cool stuff, so you don't want to miss it. I'll also be making the Echo Space tutorial in the future too, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. My editing pack and editing Discord will be in the description down below if you want to take a look at them and i'm also working on the overlay pack as mentioned earlier which will probably be out by the time you see this video with all that being said guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one boys peace out